Hey everybody, so welcome back to Spring Your Vida here in the Cloud Forest in Northwest Ecuador, our land regeneration project here. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about composting. And composting is uh, something that everybody can do, but is yeah, everybody's going to have to do it in different ways. So just like permaculture, regenerative agriculture, there's no one-size-fits-all method. There's no one-size-fits-all method for composting. So if you're uh, in an agroforestry situation, most of your composting is probably going to be done in place. You can see down here, we're always putting down a lot of mulch. And most of your composting is just going to be where you're pretty much just chopping leaves from uh, vegetation, trees, pioneers, bananas, and leaving them on the ground. Right here, I'm composting, okay? And uh, you can see this is a lot more decomposed than this one. This one I put down a while ago. So this is composting in place. Um, if you are a big uh, farmer and you've got fields of, you know, wheat, rye, barley, you might be composting with ground covers. Here we have a ground cover. This is perennial peanut or manipurajero. Uh, in temperate climates, you could be using ground covers like clover, alfalfa, etc. Cover crops, they're called, right? And then slashing those and leaving those on the ground. If you're a home gardener, which probably a lot of you tuning in are, you're probably composting in a bin, and that's great too. So there's no one size fits all. You can chop and drop, compost in place. You can compost with uh, ground covers and cover crops. You can also compost in a bin. Uh, that doesn't make sense out here to have our little wheelbarrow and truck it around to three hectares of land. But if you've got a yard or a small homestead, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and then, so now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you though, there's one technique that fits all these composting methods and fits all these scenarios, whether you are an agroforestry grower, whether you are a farmer, whether you are a, uh, a home gardener or a home homesteader, a small homesteader, there's one thing you can do that is going to improve your composting in all these scenarios and that is to make effective microorganisms. So today we're going to go on a little trip to make effective microorganisms and show you how to do that and how to boost up your compost and boost up your plant health with microorganisms. Today we are going to go on a little bit of a treasure hunt. We are looking for mycelia in soil. So we're back here in a place we're going to do a little treasure hunt. We're looking for mycelia. I have a feeling there's some back here because we're in the right conditions for it. Back here it's damp. It's shady. We've got a lot of ground cover plant. This is called Mani Porrajero or uh, perennial peanuts. Really good ground cover plant here in the, in the subtropics. And we've also got a lot of leaf fall coming from up above from a big balsa tree that started growing here uh, really only about four years ago. Balsa is a subtropical pioneer. It grows incredibly fast. It's a fantastic thing to have around because it drops big leaves. It makes a lot of biomass. It creates a lot of shade. If you watch my videos, I'm always saying biomass and shade, right? I'm always saying that because when you're regenerating a degraded uh, cow cattle pasture, you don't have either. You don't have biomass or shade. And that those are two key things for regeneration in the tropics and subtropics in forest areas. Okay, so here we are. We've got a little damn shady area. And well, yep, there we go. So these white strandy things here in the soil... These are the mycelial growths that I'm talking about. So I'm going to harvest a bunch of soil from this spot where I can see, oh, there's more of it. See, it's growing on this piece of wood. And what this is, is it's a type of fungi. Okay, it's a fungus, but it's a very beneficial one. Here's a piece of leaf that also has the... Uh, the uh, mycelia growing on it. Mycorrhizal fungi, I think it's called. I, forgive me if I mispronounce that, guys. I live out here on my own off-grid. I do a lot of reading. I never hear anybody say these words, so I have no idea how the hell to pronounce them. Uh, but I, I suppose that's what it is. Mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, oh, here's another nice piece. Beautiful strands like webs. So we're going to collect some soil from here and then I'll take you back up to where we're mixing up our batch of effective microorganisms. Which this is the first time I'm doing this, just so you know. I found a really good uh, recipe from Permaculture Research Institute in, in Australia on how to do this. This is the first time I'm making my own batch. It seems to me like it's a lot like making bread. You've got dry ingredients and you've got your wet ingredients and it's just about mixing them together in the right proportions. Uh, so I've got our dry ingredients here. I've got a bunch of leaves that I just went around and gathered up. 
and I've got uh, rice bran, okay? So what I have here is equal parts rice bran and soil, and then twice as much leaves. I just kind of guesstimated the amounts here, because like I said, it's my first time, and I'm making a, a smaller batch than they made in the big recipe at the Permaculture Research Institute. So I think I've got it right. We've got equal parts rice bran and soil from the forest, and then twice as much uh, dry leaf matter. So with the soil, guys, we went on our treasure hunt to find this. I, I kind of hit like a mother load here of mycelia. So this is really what you want is you want this nice white coating on everything of uh, forest growth, of mycelial growth. This is the fungi that's really going to help to boost up your process, okay? So first you mix all your dry ingredients together. The soil the leaves. You can also use uh, sawdust instead of leaves, but we have a lot of leaves laying around, so I just wanted to use those. And uh, just like when you mix up all your flowers and stuff for a bread, you mix up all your dry ingredients first. That's what I'm doing here. I think if you have a very large amount, you can do this on a tarp. But I'm going to start with a small batch because this is the first time I'm doing it. So that way, if I mess it up, it's not that big of a deal, okay? So we've got our dry ingredients here all mixed up. And now we're going to mix up our wet ingredients. So for wet ingredients, what I've got here is, of course, water. And I have uh, about two cups of raw sugar dissolved in some more water. So we're going to add that. So what we want to do is we want to create a nice uh, fertile medium right for our culture to live on so obviously cultures like a vinegar mother or yeast for bread it needs some kind of a sugar so i've got raw sugar here dissolved in water you could use honey you could use molasses i think and then you need some things that are alive you need some probiotics you need some culture so i have some homemade banana vinegar uh, i'm assuming you could use a cider vinegar that would seem that would work fine this definitely smells very cultured, so I'm going to put that in there. I've read about people using, uh, if they make uh, their own their own pickles and their own sauerkrauts, about using the juice also to make their effective microbes. I have uh, some cacao here that I allow to over-ferment on purpose just for this process. And you can see in this over-fermented cacao, I've already got a mother growing, okay? So this is a really nice mother. I could also use this to make vinegar. Uh, I'm just gonna add all of this in. I'm only gonna strain out the beans. So I've got this great fermented liquid, lacto-fermented, and it's already got a mother in it, which is fantastic. I think that's gonna make for a really nice culture. I just wanna strain all of that out. And I actually want to make, I'm going to throw the mother in there because I think it's always a good idea if you're uh, culturing anything to have a mother in there, a mother culture. Okay. And then we're going to mix our wet with our dry. I'm going to go little by little here because I'm not quite sure how much liquid I need. And so let me get that mother in there. I just want to make sure that I get the right texture, the right consistency, yeah? Just like baking. I think this is all about texture and consistency and not so much about measurements, but more about getting the right texture. So the formula I'm following says that your hand should stay shiny and moist after you do all your mixing, should neither be too wet nor too dry, kind of like a well wrung out compost pile. So I feel like this is still just a bit too dry. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Give it a good mix. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. Oh, we still got some dry material down here. Let's get that up to the top. pretty good. It's got like a nice kind of wrung out sponge uh, feeling to it. Doesn't feel too wet. Doesn't feel too dry. My hand is shiny and moist, but I don't have water dripping off my hands. So this is pretty much exactly what the recipe specified. 
And um, so now we're going to let this ferment. We're going to let this sit. And um, what this will be good for when it's done, if it turns out well, so stay tuned, we'll be, we'll be revealing the contents over the next two weeks, is that uh, you can add this to compost. You can add this to compost tea. You can add this to your septic tank. And what it does is it boosts up the decomposition action, right? The microbial action that's needed to prevent things from spoiling and actually create that process of everything really breaking down really nicely so nothing smells bad, so that everything has the right amount of oxygen, that your nitrogen is being used up. So as far as I, as everything I've read about effective microorganisms, microorganisms I can't wait to have my own going on. Last thing I'm gonna do is put the lid on. You wanna put an airtight lid on, and then so that this doesn't blow up as it starts to off gas, as it will, okay, it's gonna to start to make a lot of gases in there, is we made a small hole in the lid and to have, having a hose coming out, and then we're gonna place the end of this hose in a small, in a glass of water, so that any gas that's coming out will go into that glass of water and it won't just build up and just, you know, blow up the whole thing, which would really be nasty. So that's pretty much it, guys, okay? So effective microorganisms in a nutshell. Stay tuned. We're going to unveil this in a couple, in about seven to ten days, and see how, see how it came out. Okay, welcome back to Swainu De Vida. We are unveiling our uh, effective microorganism soil booster here. Here it is. I've taken off the lid. It looks really good. It's uh, very warm to the touch. which is, It's nice and warm. Feels great. Smells good. Doesn't have any kind of a bad smell. Smells like a nice fermented beer yeasty smell, which is great. Now, what do you do with this? Okay. So small scale growers right in the garden. Okay. Just dig that right into your garden. Uh, great microbial boost and uh, really helps to uh, use up all the nitrogen and carbon well in the soil. Yeah, the biggest is going to be a great boost for both your compost bin and your garden soil. Large scale growers uh, like me, best thing to do is make a foliar spray, meaning that you're going to soak this in water, steep it, add other ingredients, perhaps like soaked eggshells for calcium or soaked banana peels for more potassium. I'll link to some foliar spray recipes in the in the in the notes to this video. And I'll do another video on sprays. But you would make a spray, and then what you could do is go around with your backpack sprayer, and instead of spraying pesticides or herbicides or something nasty, you can spray this great microbial booster on the leaves of all of your uh, cultivars trees, your cacao, your lemon, your apples, oranges, pears, coconuts, whatever you got, you can spray it, and it'll boost the growth and also boost the immune systems of those plants. So small-scale growers, right in the garden. Large-scale growers will make a spray, and I'll let you know when I have a video for that.